The Sasquatch people are very much about no judgment. This is one of their most important lessons, and we as a people cannot spiritually evolve under the restraints and shackles of judgment. It is the worst disease plaguing humanity, rivaled only by fear. We probably all know people who might be considered of low character that have amazing relationships with our forest brothers. Why? The reason is simple. They do not judge us. They love us enough to let us make our mistakes and walk every path along our road back home. Lightworkers need to step up and walk the walk they talk. Too many of us are playing the judgment game under the guise of divine knowing. This is basically just a my daddy is bigger than your daddy mentality and is the definition of judgment. There is no judgment in the fifth dimension. So we need to remember that and practice that knowing responsibly. Judgment in its current glorified form did not evolve naturally. It has long been a ploy, a tool designed to keep us apart. It creates the illusion of separation. Can you imagine how powerful we would be if we didn't believe it? Those who wish to keep us in this state of fear and judgment are terrified we may be waking up. Their fragile house of lies will come tumbling down if we do. This is their worst fear, and the barrage of lies and conditioning they are subjecting us to now reflect that fear. In essence, they fear the conscious shift we all feel coming. I have been in that state of no judgment, and I know unequivocally that that needs to be our focus. Our work here at this time is to help usher that in. It's where everything changes and lower vibrational pursuits and thoughts cannot exist there. I distinctly recall that I did not have any judgments attached to anyone or anything, even those I would have considered to be an enemy. I looked at everything through the perfect lens of love. To lift the burden of judgment off of one's shoulders is truly freeing. A rich, blossoming, wise love is the next natural progression. This is about reaching a higher state of being. And if you're questioning this, you need to ask yourself why. If one thinks they can do their work effectively while wallowing in a cesspool of negative energy, they are fooling themselves. I apologize in advance for insulting anyone's intelligence, but bear with me while I provide a rudimentary example. Let's look at two sentences and the emotions they invoke. I love you. This comment keeps one in a high, positive state. I hate you. This comment is obviously lower vibrational and does not stop there. Generally, it progresses to a parade of negative thoughts that keep us in that state. It is really that simple. We have to train ourselves through conscious repetition to change those dark thoughts to light. Pay attention to how you feel when accentuating the positive instead of the old standby negative conditioned responses. There is a big answer in that feeling. I wish I could tell you why this divine moment of spiritual clarity came to me. My life transcending love zap instantly transformed me from a pretty good person with a good heart to a knowing person with a wise heart. I did not practice any meditative disciplines or other spiritual pursuits one would typically take to get there. It was gifted to me and in all honesty, it is crucial to the work I was brought here to do. Your work is calling you, and you, slash we, need to pursue it in the non-judgmental light of the love vibration. To do otherwise is ludicrous, and plays right into the hands of those that would bind ours. The gauntlet has been laid down for those who have come here to shine light onto a dark world. We need to be responsible with our thoughts and judgments and love unconditionally. 
I do not need to be right, but I am right, and each and every one of you who has come here for this work knows it. You just need to remember. Much love and light to you. It is time to step up and shine a glimmer of light into a vacuum of darkness. Like a whispered voice in my ear 